Hello, this is Jack Jacks. In this video, we're going to continue our look at continuous probability density uh, functions and con uh, continuous density functions for uh, cumulative density functions for continuous distributions. And this video, uh, for this little section, we're going to focus in on continuous CDFs. And so this video, we're going to actually focus in on the properties of the CDF, and then we're going to have a couple of follow-up videos where we learn how to use the graph of the CDF to compute probabilities and then one for inverse probabilities and then one for how to use uh, if we're given a formula for them how to work with them particularly using some calculator technology so let's just review a couple of things continuous distributions remember that uh, how they relate to probability the PDF probability density function, probabilities are areas between the PDF graph and the y-axis. The CDF, cumulative density function, the y-values are actually cumulative probabilities. So if it's a cumulative or left or less than probability, that's going to be an actual y-value on the CDF. And in general, probabilities are vertical distances on the CDF graph. So y-values and vertical distances are much easier to estimate and to calculate than areas. So in this section, we're going to start with the easier way of doing it, and that is uh, we're going to start our study of continuous distributions with learning how to use a graph or formula for a CDF to compute probabilities and inverse probabilities. In section three, we're going to then turn it around and see how we can use the PDF to uh, to tell us something about probability and unfortunately that's going to require us to work with areas which are a little bit harder to work with um, but we're going to so we're going to start there with some nice shapes like uniform and triangular distributions which give us some rectangles and triangles which are easy to find areas of so that's a little bit later on and then after that we're going to examine connections between the PDF and the CDF and we'll use some technology to create calculate probabilities inverse probabilities and distribution parameters and we'll also use the built-in PDF and CDF and inverse probability calculator functions to compute probabilities and inverse probability related to several standard continuous distributions that are pretty important for us, particularly ones that are going to be important for us uh, next unit in our work with uh, inferential statistics. All right, so let's... Let's review some stuff that we covered in our last video about properties of the graph of a cumulative density function. So the CDF graph is always on or above the x-axis. It is In the continuous distribution case, it's a continuous graph. That means it's one connected piece. There are no breaks in it. Sometimes that's true of the PDF. Sometimes that's not true, but it's always true of the CDF, one connected piece. It's always non-decreasing. So that means it's level or increasing throughout. The domain is the set of all real numbers, but we can ignore any part where the CDF of X is 0 or the CDF of X is 1. It starts at 0 on the left and ends at 0 equals, I mean, starts at 0 on the left and ends at 1 on the right. So it increases from 0 to 1. So when I say starts at zero on the left, it could be either on the x-axis or approaching the x-axis asymptotically. And on the right, it's either on the line, horizontal line, y equals one, or approaches it asymptotically. Barring some notation from calculus here, we would say then that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of CDF of x is zero, and the limit as x approaches infinity of the CDF of x is one. So it's approaching zero, it either is zero or approaching zero on the far left, and it either is one or approaching one on the far right. Any graph that has these characteristics is a legitimate CDF. It is a cumulative density function for some probability, um, co uh, continuous probability distribution. The Y values on the graph are the cumulative probabilities again. So the probability that x is less than or equal to a is the same as the probability that x is less than a, something that doesn't happen usually in the uh, discrete case, and that's equal to the CDF of a. In the discrete case, the probability that x is less than or equal to a is the CDF, but in this case, that's still true here, but the, the uh, probability that x is less than a 
turns out to be the same as the probability that x is less than or equal to a because the probability that x equals a is zero for any a value. Now, there are a couple of different classes we could look at for the graph shape. So first class I'm going to look at are class of functions where the graph actually is a zero on the left and one on the right. Okay, and uh, in between it's got to increase or at least not decrease from zero to one. So it's got to increase from zero to one. It could have some level pieces where it doesn't increase or decrease, but otherwise it's got to increase. So in this case, the formula is in at least three pieces with CDF of X equals zero for X less than A, CDF of X equals one for X greater than B, and maybe some other formula between A and B. So here's an example. It's notice it's zero here on the left and there, there could be a little arrow here if we wanted so that it goes from all the way out here to the left, it's always zero up till it reaches four. And then once it reaches 10, it's always one from there on out to the right. Again, we could put a little arrow there if we want. So it goes on out to the right at one. So it actually is one here past uh, 10, to the right of 10 and to the left of four, it actually is zero. In between, it increases from four to 10. And this one I had it increase at a constant rate. So we just had a straight line connecting them up. So this is one way the graph of a CDF could look. The important part is between four and 10. And in fact, if we wanted to just ignore the part greater than 10 and less than four, that would be just fine because the PDF is actually zero on both of those pieces. And there's nothing there uh, probability wise for us to really get anything out of. The interesting part is between four and 10. If we want to restrict our attention to just that part, uh, that would be fine. This one, similarly, the part we want to focus in on is between two and nine inclusive. So between two and nine, the function increases from zero to one. And once it gets to nine, it stays one from there on to the right. And once it's to the left of two, it's zero there. So once again, we have horizontal pieces on the end. And this one, however, instead of increasing in a straight line, increases concave up like a uh, right side up bowl. Okay, the next one increases concave down like an upside down bowl. Still, it increases from zero to one. Uh, this case from X going to four to 12, but the Y's go from zero to one. And once it reaches one, it stays there in a straight line. And up until it starts moving up, it stays at zero here or to the left. So again, we could restrict our attention to just between four and 12, and we, that would be the interesting part. So it could be straight, linear, uh, or concave up, concave down, or it could be a mixture of concavities. This one increases concave down for a while and then concave up for a while. All of these are, are possibilities for the CDF. Now there's another possibility, and that possibility is instead of actually being um, horizontal at some point on the ends, like y equals zero on the left, y equals one on the right, it might have a horizontal asymptote in, instead. Hopefully you're familiar with that term from your al algebra classes. So here's an example of one that actually is zero on the left. And this is not unusual for some functions. It's you know basically negatives we can ignore. But then the positives are the interesting part. So notice it increases from zero to one. But in this case, it doesn't actually ever actually hit one. So here's y equals one. If you see that, it's this line going across right here. And notice that the graph approaches that without actually touching it. As we go further and further to the right, the graph gets closer and closer to that horizontal line at y equals one. We call the line a horizontal asymptote. And so um, anyway, it could be like that. So it doesn't actually actually hit one, although at some point out here, it's hard to tell it apart from one. So if you look at this part of the graph right here at the right edge of the, of the uh, graph that we have here, it's really hard to tell it apart from the line y equals one. In fact, this last last few uh, pieces, this last piece of it here, it looks pretty much like a horizontal line. You can't really visually tell it apart. So that's a horizontal asymptote. It could have a horizontal asymptote on both ends. This one here, technically speaking, the y's are between zero and one 
not including zero, not including one, it ever never actually hits zero, never actually hits one. So this is actually a fairly typical shape for many of the distributions. For example, the normal distribution has this basic kind of a shape. So does the uh, so does the t distribution. So where we where it has a horizontal asymptote of the of the y equals zero, the x-axis on the left, then it increases the end whole way and it starts to level out here so that you have an asymptote of y equals 1 on the right side. This one is actually increasing the whole way. It's actually increasing concave up for a while. Somewhere in here, actually right here in this one, it hits an inflection point, actually on the axis in this particular one, and it turns to be concave down from there on out. So that gives you some examples of uh, CDFs, there's several different possibilities there, but notice what properties they all had in common. They all essentially start at zero and end at one, either asymptotically or actually equal to that, and in between they increase. So come back for the next video and we'll see how we can use a graph such as this to compute probabilities.